What's going on guys, CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to show you how to turn an old PC like this into an Android machine. So basically what I have here is Android x86 8.1 running on this old HP machine I picked up for $20 at a local yard sale. You'll have access to the full Play Store so you can install your favorite Android apps like PUBG, Hulu, Netflix, Kodi, so on and so on. This will basically work on any kind of PC or laptop. I'm using an HP 6000 Pro here. This is the SFF model. I have four gigabytes of RAM and luckily this unit here does support DDR3. A few days ago as of making this video, I came across a random yard sale and figured I'd go ahead and stop and see what they had. I was able to pick this up for $20 without any hard drives. It had four gigabytes of RAM pre-installed and the GPU. This is definitely an older machine. It has a Core 2 Quad 9550 at 2.8 gigahertz, and the GPU is an AMD 6350 with 512 megs of RAM. Now this would actually make a perfect little emulation machine. I've previously done videos showing you how to install Botocera or Recall Box on an old repurposed machine like this, but I have a lot of viewers who are really interested in Android, so I figured I'd go ahead and do an Android x86 tutorial. There are a few things that you're going to need before we get started here. Obviously, if you have an old machine like this, you're not going to have Wi-Fi. You're going to have to use Ethernet, or you can use a USB Wi-Fi adapter. I'll leave a link in the description to Amazon. I got one that works perfectly with Android x86. The next thing we're going to need is a USB drive. I'm using a 64 gigabyte USB 3.0 drive, but all you need is something that's around 8 gigabytes, because all we're going to be doing is installing Android to this, and then flashing it to the internal hard drive of the PC. And finally, I recommend picking up an SSD or another drive. I don't deal with dual boot or triple boot on my channel because as soon as somebody does something wrong with their dual boot setup, wipes out some important information on one partition, it's going to be my fault. If you're really interested in doing a dual boot or a triple boot setup, you can always do a quick Google search and find out how to do that. But in this video, we're going to be using a single drive. I'll be using a cheap Kingston 240 gigabyte SSD that I picked up on Amazon for $30. You can also use a mechanical drive if you really want to. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to move over to my Windows PC. We're going to download Android x86 and get it flashed to the USB drive. Then we're going to move back over here to the PC we want to install it on. And I'll show you how to install it. It's really simple to do. Okay, so here we are at my Windows machine. We need to download two things. First thing we need to do is download the Android x86 image, and then we need to download an application called Rufus so we can flash it to the USB drive. So as you can see here, I have my USB drive inserted into my PC. It's just a blank drive. Um, Rufus will take care of everything for you if you don't want to clear it out. Next thing we're going to do is head to the links in the description. This is Android x86 8.1 R1, which means release one. If you're watching this in the future, it might be a higher number. Tons of information here. This supports 64-bit and the 32-bit kernel. There are two versions we can download, and it really depends on how old your PC is. Usually, I start out with the 64-bit version, but if that doesn't work, I jump right to the 32-bit version. Flashing this doesn't take long at all. There's a lot of information here. Go ahead and read through this page, but when you're finished with that, we're going to go to the FOSS Hub to download it. On this older machine, I'm going to be downloading the x86 version. This is the 32-bit version. The 64 is above it if you want to try that out first. I'm going to go ahead and download the ISO. It's 675 megabytes. Shouldn't take that long depending on your internet connection. Next up, we're going to head to the Rufus website and download this application here. It's 3.4 as of making this video. Now that both of mine are finished downloading, I'm just gonna take them and put them on the desktop for easy access. Here's Rufus and the Android image we're gonna be flashing to the USB drive. So we're pretty much done with the browser. All we need to do now is open up Rufus it might look a little intimidating, but it's super simple to use. The device is what we're going to be flashing to. Make sure you have your USB drive chosen here. Next, we want to choose Select and navigate to where we have the image. Mine's on my desktop, Android x86 8.1 R1. Double click. Double check that you have the correct USB drive chosen and click Start. Write in ISO image mode. This is recommended. Just click OK. Now we'll get a warning that it's going to delete everything on that USB drive. Click OK. 
It's going to create the proper partitions and flash the Android x86 image to the USB. Just give it a little time to finish up. My USB drive is now ready. I'm going to take it out of my PC. We're going to move over to the PC we want to install Android x86 on. And we're going to need to enter the boot menu. Now, certain manufacturers use different keys, like on a Dell, it's F12. On my Asus laptop, it's F8. But your machine might be different, so you want to do some research. Find out how to enter the boot menu when you start your computer up. It'll be a certain hotkey. F2, F5, F10, F8. Could be any number of those. So now I'm going to move over to the HP you saw at the beginning of this video, and we're going to flash Android x86 to the hard drive. I've plugged in my keyboard and the USB drive. I'm going to power the unit on and press F9. That's specific to this HP model. Yours could be F9, but you might want to check online. This is going to take me to the boot menu. Now yours might look a little different than this. This is an older PC, so it doesn't have UEFI. Yours might say USB device SanDisk UEFI. Go ahead and select that one if you have the option. This uses the old BIOS standard, so we only have one option for USB device. And since we flashed Android to the USB, that's what we want to boot from. Usually this gives you 60 seconds before it boots into whatever's highlighted. I just press down on the arrow key. And the very first option is Live CD. This will run Android x86 without installation. I recommend doing this first to make sure everything does function properly. Nothing will be saved, so if you do sign into the Google Play Store and download apps, nothing will be saved when you boot back up. But Live CD is a great option for testing it out to make sure it works before we do an installation. If you're ready to install this to a disk, scroll down to Advanced Options and press Enter. We want to find the Auto Installation, Auto Install to Specific Hard Drive. From here, we're just going to press Enter. It's going to boot to the installation menu. And from here, we can choose the drive we want to install Android x86 to. The removable drive is the drive we have Android x86 installed on. And the hard disk is the drive I'm going to be installing to. That's my SSD. It's a 240 gigabyte SSD. This will totally erase that hard drive. So make sure you don't have anything important installed on there. Like I said at the beginning, we're not dealing with dual boot or triple boot. If you want to partition a drive, there are plenty of videos out there that show you how. Just press enter to choose the drive you want to install to. It's going to give you a confirmation here. We want to click yes. This is going to totally erase that drive. I'm going to click yes. It's going to format partition SDA1. And it's going to write the Android x86 image to the hard drive or SSD. When it's finished, it's going to ask you to run Android x86 or reboot. I always do a reboot, so I'm going to unplug the drive, choose reboot, and exit. Now, normally it should boot directly from that drive, but if it doesn't, you can always enter the boot menu and choose the drive we just installed Android to. Give you a five second countdown. We want to choose the first one or just let it sit for five seconds. It's going to automatically boot up Android x86 and we're booting from that SSD. The first boot could take up to 10 minutes. If it takes any longer than 15, then you got an issue. You might want to reflash or try the other image. I forgot to plug in my USB Wi-Fi dongle. Now, normally I just use Ethernet because it's much faster, but I'm on the other side of my office right now with no Ethernet, so I had to use this. I'll leave a link in the description for the only one I've personally been able to get to work. You might find something else, but this one is only 2.4 gigahertz, so we don't get that 5 gigahertz network. So it should be finished booting here in just a second. It's going to be a lot faster with this SSD. And basically, you're going to set it up like you would a brand new Android phone. I'm going to connect to my Wi-Fi network, and then I'm going to sign into Google just like you would with a brand new Android device. So here it is. We now have Android x86 8.1 running on our PC. The first thing I usually do is head over to settings. Then I go to Android x86 options and turn on the native bridge. This is going to give us better compatibility with ARM only apps from the Google Play Store. And the next thing I usually do is head over to the Google Play Store and download my favorite Android apps. So you might run into a few apps that don't work on Android x86 even with the native Android bridge turned on. They're far and few in between and it used to be a lot worse. Personally, I haven't run into any with Android 8.1, 
but in the older 7.1 builds, I had a ton of apps that just wouldn't work because they were designed for ARM chips. The best thing to do is just start downloading your favorite apps and see if they work. And yes, this will support controllers, Bluetooth or wired. So if you have a Bluetooth dongle, you can connect your Xbox One or your PS4 controllers to the PC. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I really like the Android x86 over Prime OS or Phoenix OS or even Remix OS because it's stock Android. There's absolutely no bloat in here except for the Android x86 options in the settings menu. So you're not going to get bombarded with Facebook apps and things like that. So basically, it's pretty much a stock Android experience on your PC. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you really run into a bad issue, do a Google search on it because somebody else has probably run into that issue and come up with a fix. There are a few Android x86 forums out there. XDA also has an Android x86 section and there's tons of information over there. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to keep up to date with things like this. And like always, thanks for watching.